my son's managed to procure this old um, cylinder mower and the good news is it's got a Briggs and Stratton engine so that's good they're always their motor compasses are pretty good it's a web which I haven't worked on before so let's see what little idiosyncrasies it's got a couple of little things is good this little lock out here for the for when you want to start it it's missing a spring it's got a little spring in there and that should shoot out when you squeeze it but with no spring there it's not going to do that so and then so what it should do that should stay lined up with that hole so when you squeeze it it should drop back in so I'm sure I can find a little spring for that so one of the things these has got these mowers have got is this little lever here which when you flick it back it, it you can see where it's contacting the top of the spark plug there and it's shorting out the coil and the plug so it'll stop the engine uh, one of the hazards with these is if you're mowing under a shrub and it knocks it back and you don't notice that you might think there's something wrong with the motor but that's that's a pretty simple thing to fix let me show you now how you check the spark on these This isn't going to be a full restoration, I'm just going to get this running. Um, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take this apart. Those balls, that's loose, that's normal. But it sometimes catches because it's got some gunk in it. And I'll, I'll do that um, and show that how you do that on a video. This governor spring here is quite obviously knackered. It's been re-stretched and put back on. Those bolts, those screws there. That are holding that manifold on there loose and also it's splashing the fuel out of there so I'm gonna to have to fix that um, that's got a little bit of play in it I'm not sure whether I can fix that or not I don't know if it's worth getting a new carby for this or not but I've um, I've given this a shot of aero start and got it to start so it runs the compression is not the greatest to get this open, you get a small screwdriver, just pop it in that little corner there, in that in between those two faces, give it a little bit of a tap, and then you just twist that and that, that'll come off. So after you've pried that loose, put a tin or some similar under there to catch all the bits that are going to come out, and you twist that. And then that'll pop that open until you'll have this piece and the six balls that came out. Then one thing you don't do is you don't hit it on there because that will, this is cast aluminium and if you hit there, cast aluminium is quite uh, granular and brittle and if you tap on there, if you snap that off, that's where your little grass screen screws on. So you won't be able to put that back on. So where I hit it is just there. I'll give it a tap there. Oh, there we go. That one came loose quite easily. So it's lefty loosey righty tidy. So that just comes off. And now I'll show you how that the I'll show you the operation of that and then I'll show the refitting of it. So the way this works is there's six spaces in there and five poles on this and what that causes is with the six balls in there when the coil is returning it's doing that and as you can see those balls are all jumping out of the way nothing's getting caught because it's running up that little hardened cam face but as soon as you pull the cord one of them gets caught and in this case it's that one there it's that one there that one there that one there, well, that's a coincidence, it's the same ones each time. 
Maybe it's because it's not lying flat. Let's try lying it flat. Okay. So now it's that one there. Now it's that one there. Now it's that one there. So it's, a, it's just random which one gets caught. Um, and the way the way this works is when you pull it round, it's doing that. And when it, when the cables when the cord's returning, it's doing that. There we go. See that one there's caught. That one there. And the reason it doesn't make that noise when it's when the engine's running is because they get thrown out onto this face here for a centrifugal force, so it's perfectly quiet. That's the way these work. And the reason this one wasn't the reason this one was catching is because I had a heap of gunk in there that I've cleaned out. I've cleaned it out with some petrol. So the way you reassemble these is you just sit that in there, drop one of these in each of these six spaces. And then this piece here, which has a, a lip seal, and this lip seal's in pretty good nick. Had a little bit of gunk in there, but nothing to write home about. You just give it a tap. And there you go. So now we'll refit that. So this just screws back on there. So a little bit of never sees on these threads because that's steel and this is aluminium. So a little bit of never sees. A little bit of never sees never hurts. Put that on there. Just spin that up. Just tighten it by hand. Because it'll it'll tighten. It'll tighten as you as you as you pull the motor to start it. A little bit of play there, but that's, that's pretty normal. So earlier on I fitted this, and I just snugged it up by hand. But the problem with that is, is that when I, I didn't actually expect it to start first pull. And it did. And what it's done is, is there's the key that came out of it. It's smashed the key to bits because it came loose. And I really wasn't expecting that, but I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting it to start first pull, I was expecting to pull it half a dozen, maybe 10 or 12 times before I got it to start. So that's the key, that's part of the key that's come out and it's, it's stripped the key, which is a good thing because key steel is very soft and the whole idea of a key is that it shits itself and protects this expensive component and this expensive component. So that's, that's sheared. And um, and this has all come loose. So I thought, okay, well, no, no dramas. I've got some st some key steel, so I'll make a new one. This is three sixteenths, like four point seven something millimeter key. So I thought, okay, no dramas. I'll make a new one. But so there's the magnet off the magneto. Check this out. I forgot. Briggs and Stratton engines have an aluminium key. So what I've had to do is, I've had to get a piece of aluminium that I found that was 5 millimeters, and I've cut a square section out of it and I've filed it down to about 4.7-ish millimeters and I've left these two faces untouched. So I've got my 90 degree reference, so if I file it and measure it, file it and measure it, it should fit pretty well and it's a bit long at the moment but I'll show you um, where this goes. What you do now is slide that on there, line the key up, the keyway sorry, because the, this is the key that's the keyway. Some people call this a keyway but that's incorrect. This is the key and that's the keyway just like it's um, because that's the way it goes in. So that goes into there Hear that sound change? That's all. That's as far as it's going to go. And I'm pretty, 
pretty happy with that actually, that's worked really well. So now you just mark it. So I'll take that out now and cut that to length. So now that I've got the key made, I've just rounded off the edges, rounded off the corners, just so that's a bit of a nicer fit. A little bit of never sees on that taper there because God knows when this neck's going to come off. Not much, you don't want too much on there, just a little bit. So that goes on. Once again, lining up the keyway. Key goes in, give that a little bit of a, a hand to get home, that's okay, that's good that that's not all the way home, that'll be fine. Now we screw this on, I've changed my mind, I'm going to torque this up, so I've found a socket that fits on there, that's a 22mm socket fits okay on there and the advantage is you can use that, that acts like a ratchet so I just need to hold the flywheel still with this screwdriver here with a block of wood so that it doesn't it's kind of jamming it just nicely just make sure that pins in There we go, there's 60 foot pounds. I'll just double check that. Yep, that's 60 foot pounds. So that's the torque I could find on the internet. The way these things work is when you actuate the throttle cable, you're pulling on this linkage here, which pulls on the governor, which pulls on the carburetor. So you can see that spring tension is quite important because the way these things work is when the housing's on and you've got a casing formed like that, when the engine's running too fast, it pressurizes this area here. So if you've got the throttle revving it, revving it really hard, the pressure builds up here. And, and as you can see, it's pulling the throttle back. That's why this spring tension is so important. So you actually only influence the governor which then influences the, oh really? You influence the governor, which influences the carburetor. So there's your, your idle stop there. So that's, that's why that governor spring is so important. So we'll have a go at changing that. Now, a lot of times, you practice it first so that you don't look like a twit on camera. And this one, wasn't sure how much mucking around this governor spring was going to take. So I'll just take it out of the packet. So there it is there. Tiny little thing. Focus. Hooks through there. Get that through there. There we go. So that one's that's that one done. And then the other end goes through there. I'm not exactly sure how that works. So let's have a go at that, see if we can't wreck this little governor spring, eh? Hey? Oh, there we go. Oh, that wasn't too hard at all. 
That wasn't too hard at all. Oh, that feels better. As you can see, when it's when the tension's right off the throttle cable, and then the, the engine's revving, there's a little bit of air pressure. It'll, it'll slow the engine down, and then you put a little bit of load on that spring, and then the engine will push there, and it'll load up that, and it'll stop the engine from over revving. As I pointed out earlier, these two screws are loose. That one's difficult to get to, and this one's impossible to get to. So I'm going to look through my box of bolts and change them. So we'll start with taking the fuel tank off this um, vacuum jet carburetor. Just loosen those two screws. Now what you have to be careful of is you don't damage this. That's your, that's your uh, vacuum jet that draws the fuel up from the fuel tank into the carburetor. That's why sometimes these won't run with um, less than a quarter of a tank because it just doesn't reach far enough in. You can see it sort of reaches to about 10 mil from the bottom of the tank. So you're going to check one of these. You really need to fill the tank up. That's what I would find, I find is always best anyway. So we'll just put that fuel tank over there out the way. Now let's have a look at this here. No, there's no way to tighten that. So I might just have to pass on that. So there's no way to tighten that. There's no screw underneath, there isn't. I was hoping maybe there was a screw underneath, I could just nip it up. But there isn't, so I don't know what's making that low, so I might have to investigate that a little bit further. If you undo this screw here, there'll be a mark on here where it's been compressed by the clamp, so you, it, it's pretty easy to get that back in the right place. You pull that out, and then that just drops out of there, so that's good, that's nice and easy. If you undo this screw here, Now what I always do, grab all those bits in the, in the same order and put them back in there. Now, now, now they can't get lost. So now I'll loosen these two screws here, or make them looser because they're pretty, you can see that one's been, I don't know if you can see that, but that one's been, I'll show you in a second one, once I get it out. Somebody's cross cut them with a grinder to make them like a sort of semi butchered Phillips head. So I think we can get them out. Can we get out? Oh, yeah, here we go. That's a bit easier. Yeah, so it looks like quarter U. It looks like 5 6 inch UNC thread. So you can see that. Someone's been at that with a hacksaw or a grinder. So I'll get rid of them. And I'll replace them with a hex head bolt, because hex head bolts are always better than screws. Not a lot of things beat a screw, but a hex head bolt does. Let's get the rest of that one out. I'm not going to worry too much about that gasket there, because that... Alright, and then so what you do is now, to get this linkage off of here, just tip that up, and that'll just drop out of there. So just... And the good thing with videoing is now, I don't have to remember how it went back together because I can look at the video. So there's the gasket that came off. Mm. Oops, I've seen worse. And there's the screw that's come out of there and that one's been cross cut with a grinder or a hacksaw as well. So, hmm, oh well. It is what it is, we'll replace them. Now just looking at this exhaust manifold, I'm wondering, what are the chances of that coming off? The way these work is that locking collar, this screws into the head and then this locking collar locks it on. So, 
they usually come off okay. Oh, that's a surprise. Now, the astute amongst you may have noticed the shiny marks on there from where I tried to take it off. I've actually had some penetrine on this. That doesn't look too bad. What we'll do is we'll leave that off for the moment, but once we put that back on, I'll use the decibel meter on my phone and check whether it's sort of still in spec. I don't want to get anybody in trouble with this because this is my son's lawnmower and he lives in the suburbs. I live in the country, but he lives in the suburbs. So we'll, once we once we finish, we'll put that back on. We'll run it and see how we're going. That actually came off a lot easier than I was expecting. Like I said, the, the astute amongst you may have noticed the shiny marks. So I have actually already loosened this, but once, once again, much to my surprise, it actually came off because that's steel, aluminium, and this thing was made in 1967, I think it was. I'll put a little bit of Never Seize on those threads. Never Seize is always a good idea. Never Seize is never a bad idea. So there we go, so we'll line it like that. Give it a bit of tappy tap tap, as the AVE likes to say. Yep, that's pretty good. Okay, so it looks like there's not much I can do about that. If you can, not if it comes out on camera very well, but it's, it's worn a little bit over on this shoulder here. So when that goes back in, it's got a little bit of play. But it'll just have to be what it is because I don't know if this cover is worth throwing much money at. So that's going to need either a new carburetor or we'll just have to see how it runs once I've got the new governor spring in. There's a little bit of play there, probably way more than it should have, but even that, even the design of it, it's allowed to lift that far before it does anything, before it stops from coming out, so I don't know. So I'll do that back up. I think it was about there. I've lost track of the number of turns, but it was just catching on that shoulder just there. So I'll put that back together, see how that goes. It, it'll need to be adjusted anyway with the new governor spring, so I'll have to tink tinker with it. But these screws here look in pretty good condition. They're the ones that go into the fuel tank. So I will get some Never Seize. I'll clean that off with a scraper. Although those faces look pretty good. A little bit of, little bit of wear there where it's been, you can see that little, that little shadow line there where it's just been fretting against it from where it's come loose. But that face is fairly flat by the looks of it. So yeah, we'll go ahead and give that a lick with a stone Give that a scrape, put the gasket back on with a bit of gasket compound, I think. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a rub with a file, make sure there's no high spots. Looks like there is, just there and there. So I'll get a feeler gauge and a, and a straight edge. And we'll see how much we've got there. Oh, it's just starting to just starting to clean that up now. I'm going to put these in with spring washer. So I've got a spring washer, and the reason you don't put a flat washer on a spring washer, I was always taught, is because that sharp edge there bites into the job. That sharp edge there bites into the underneath the head of the bolt. So if you put a flat washer as well, then you may as well not bother with a spring washer because it's the flat washer will constantly rotate against the job so you're locking this onto the flat washer so you're not really achieving anything. And I've put some purple thread locker on there so hopefully these won't ever come loose. So I've cleaned that up with a file, got that pretty flat. If you hold the straight edge on there, this is a bit hard to do, I probably should put this in a vise and show you, but there's about, it's about seven thou, it's not much. That's a seven thou feeler gauge and that's dragging through there. 
So it's probably a little bit more than seven, but it's good enough for this old girl. Okay, here's something I didn't know about these carburetors. If you look in there, you can see there's a swirl blade, like a swirl plate in there. that causes the, the air fuel mixture to swirl, which is good. I didn't know they had that. I haven't tampered with a lot of these. One of the advantages of using a gasket compound is it holds the gasket in place while you're refitting whatever it is you've taken off and putting back on. So we get this linkage here. That goes up in through there. You hold that against there. Get your top bolt. Second time I've dropped that washer. So now we're going to refit the carby. So I've put some gasket compound on that gasket. And my favourite one for this kind of job is this one here. This Loctite number 3 aviation gasket sealant. Not very expensive. I've had this bottle for years. Well, there you go. July 2004. So I've had it for many moons. And I've used probably a quarter of it. And it's got like a sort of bitumen sort of smell to it. And um, I just think it's one of the better ones, that's all. So anyway, that's the one that I use. This is going to go back on now with those two bolts in place. I have actually had to clean these holes out a little bit, just half a millimetre or so just because these bolt shanks are, um, I think they're the same as the major diameter of the threads, which is a bit, a bit odd, but there you go. Get this linkage here. Just tuck that through there. And just get these two bolts to start. I've already tested them, so I know the threads are the same. So they just got to start in there. So I'll get a spanner and nip them up and we'll be right back with the next step. I tried to find a torque value on the internet but I, I sort of really gave up looking because it was just becoming a little bit of a bit of a chore. Now <clears throat> that one was quite hard to get to. This one's not too bad. Um, but I think if I was to do this job again, I'd use socket head bolts so that I can get an Allen key in there and get that because this one's a bit hard to get to. But that's done up tight now. That's not going anywhere. And um, um, I think I've done them up tight enough. I don't think it's going to leak. And I don't think it's going to come undone. Not with that Loctite and um, thread locker on there. So let's put the rest of that together now. So now I'm going to refit this linkage here. And the reason I've left the screw in there is so that I know the order of the parts came apart in because it's got a little shoulder washer there. That little shoulder washer which goes through this piece like that. So that's your, that's your pivot surface. Then that little washer goes in there and then just pop that screw back in there and then Bob's your uncle. Just up to there. Now to refit the throttle linkage. So that just tucks through there. Then once again that just goes in there. And you don't have to guess where that was. Because it's got a mark on there. So tighten that up. a slightly larger screwdriver and just check that it's tight. Yep, that's good. Okay, so now I'm going to refit the fuel tank. So you very carefully push that up through there so that you don't put too much load on that little plastic siphon there because it's quite easy to break. And then the two screws go in here and here, in there and there. And so I'll do them up and then we'll see what the next step is. Okay, so I've had to undo that off of there because that was too tight. I couldn't get the screwdriver down through there. So we'll just nip these two screws up and then that's the fuel tank refitted. And then once again, I'll refit this screw here. At the beginning of the video, 
I showed how to test the spark without the spark tester. Uh, but I've recently purchased one of these. I've had to redub this audio because as you can see from um, through the window of the shed, it was so windy that a lot of what I said didn't come through because it was just being drowned out by the sound of the shed door rattling and the wind outside. But basically you connect this to the spark plug lead and then to the spark plug itself. And when you turn the engine over, you'll get a small light, that little light bulb in there lights up. And it's a really good way to test the spark without having to take the spark plug out because some are quite difficult to get to and these things are really good for doing exactly this testing the spark without having to take the spark plug out okay so i have had this running earlier today i've put the cover back on and the uh, grass screen and um, it's as near as shit to being cold. The engine's, engine's cold, it's barely warm to the touch from the back there. So now we're going to see how easy this thing starts and it does start very easy. So about three quarters, about three quarters choke, a little bit on the throttle, maybe a bit more choke. The subject of the next video will be what's inside here. We'll have a bit of a look at this, see if it looks okay. These are normally a chain drive. But I think this one's belt drive. So that's the colour it would have been originally. I don't know if it's coming up. Actually, it's coming up pretty good on the camera. It's like a avocado or olive green. Nice colour. So we'll have a look at this in the next video. Make sure all these bearings are okay. Make sure the drive release mechanism works okay there. And then that's your drive mechanism from your squeeze handle. So we'll make sure that all looks like it's working okay. Then we'll pull this off. Check the bearings, give that a bit of a sharpen. Change the oil last up. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, once again, please click like, subscribe and that notification bell. So you get a notification when my next video comes up, which shouldn't be too long, I hope. I'd like to get this job sorted before Christmas. Um, so the next video should be on the drive mechanism and the cutting blades. And um, I'll change the engine oil also. Okay, thanks again.